So hey everyone, what's going on with you? I'm uh, Chris Hackerink for Liberate Science, and today I'll be doing a bit of a demo of ResearchEqual.com, uh, an open access and open source uh, publishing platform. We released on the first of February, so we're still quite fresh. Uh, but so I'll be doing a demo. I'll be walking you through a bit of our tech stack, and I will also be uh, showing you a bit about how you can start contributing code or no code. So uh, I, th I think it'll be well uh, enough time to go through all of this. So please do also feel invited to at any point, you know, uh, drop a comment in the chat, or if you have questions also perfectly okay to put it there. But I also understand there is a doc, so you can find the link to the Google doc in the chat. So also feel free to in invite it to drop anything there. And uh, if I can't cover anything, uh, everything in the, in the session, then I'm happy to also follow up. So if you, uh, if you have any urgent questions or non urgent questions, also just feel free to let me know. So I'll pretty much get started with the demo immediately. Um, and uh, yeah, if you wanna follow along, I'm gonna put the link in the chat real quick. So it's researchequals.com. So if you wanna you know, click along, feel free to do it, uh, but definitely not necessary to do so. So I'm gonna open up my browser real quick and go there. Uh, Wrong version. So I'm going to go to research equals, and what I want to really show you today uh, is a, a few aspects. Uh, so before we st get started, really digging into the platform, what uh, I want to talk a bit about is about what what the publishing platform is about. So the publishing platform doesn't necessarily entail articles as you know it, but it's really about publishing steps of your research. So it's about how you uh, come to findings and less about what those findings are. Uh, so this new publishing format uh, is called a research module and it's about step-by-step -step publishing. So uh, to also give you a bit of a sense of what that is, I'm just going to go through this first page with you together uh, before we start digging in. So it's really about publishing each step of your research, uh, also to ensure that all of the documentation, all of the, uh, the provenance of findings uh, gets made public. So each bit and piece of your research process can be published here. And that is whether it's text, uh, it can also be data, it can be code, things that would usually or very quickly end up as supplemental materials or, uh, or somewhere else in repositories here really comes center stage. Uh, and each step then also gets a DOI and you can link them together to, to document your journey. And that also means that you know if you if you, if you go one direction, uh, you might have a hypothesis, or you might have you know an analysis script or whatever, and you end up saying no, I'm not going to continue with this. That's also perfectly fine because that's part of the process as well. Uh, you get forking paths. You might say, hey, I need to change something and go in a different direction. That's all part of the research process, but now we very often don't see it, which causes this uh, selective publication issue. Uh, so here it's all about documenting those steps and, uh, and learning from it. And what we do at Research Equals is we really come from this open access philosophy and open science philosophy. We also have a manifesto, which uh, if you, if you want to read it, I'm happy to share. But we are, like, I've been working in open science for over a decade now. And I think that paying to open access, uh, publish something is ridiculous because it makes it in inaccessible to a lot of people. So we opt to do it a bit differently. We say, okay, our financial model is publishing open access is for free for everyone. So also if you're, uh, if you're in a country where we are, for example, not allowed to do business, you can still publish open access. Um, but if you want to close down your publication, and that doesn't mean paywall, but purely the license, that's when you have to pay because that goes against our philosophy. Uh, so if you want to do that, then you know you, know, you help finance uh, finance the uh, the platform, and that is really the key to uh, to research equals publishing research steps. 
open access for individuals completely free uh, but if you want to make it a bit more restrictive of course you can but you have to pay for it and what's uh, what's important here is is that each of these steps that you can publish uh, is really up to you as the researcher to decide uh, what this is so you can choose the language you can choose when it's published with whom and really what the output is uh, so if you if you want to sign up uh, you know that's also available to to any individual uh, who has access to the internet so you can simply sign up and uh, get started with this. I already have an account as you might've expected. So I'll walk you through uh, from my account, but if you're uh, interested in the platform, yeah, uh, I do invite you to sign up and, and let me know if you have any, any feedback on the platform because we're continuously improving. So I'm gonna log in on my account, but before I do that, I'm gonna quickly check the chat. I see there's primarily the link to the Google Doc. So that's a good reminder for me to say if you have questions or if I'm going too fast, please do let me know. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to log into my account here and show you how you can start publishing research modules. So in essence, if there's one thing you take away, it's really that uh, with Research Equals, we want to give researchers uh, the power to publish what they want, when they want it. So also if you go like, hey, I don't want to publish something, then you, you don't have to, of course. Um, so I'm going to walk through a specific uh, example here uh, is that uh, somebody here decided to share a presentation. Oh, just going to go into that real quick. And we can see immediately is some, some of the pieces of information. So this doesn't get gatekept by a peer reviewer per se, but it's we publish often free, uh, openly such that we can get reviews from others uh, in public so that the work that is developing uh, gets shared. And we see, okay, we, we register when uh, it gets published, each, uh, uh, each research module, each research research step gets a DOI and a license and people can add whichever files they so choose. In this specific scenario, because it was a presentation, um, they added a PDF so we can go through that. Um, but also if we now were inspired to continue on this work, we wanted to add a step that follows from this one. We can immediately do that by uh, creating a new research modules module by clicking this button. So by doing that, we would immediately create a new module, which is linked to this presentation that we just came from. And we could start adding, uh, uh, adding information. We could say, okay, you know, now this new module, uh, we wanna publish it under a CC0 license instead of CC by, and we could sort of choose what kind of step it is that we're taking. So we made a pre-selection here, but uh, we're more than happy to extend that always. So uh, if you're missing something, that's all, definitely something that, uh, that we would love to hear. So we could, for example, uh, add a next step and share, uh, I don't know what makes sense. Let's, let's say a, a new hypothesis that came up from this presentation regarding uh, patient data in type B. And we could, you know, uh, that way very easily start building on the work of others, but we could also say, hey, uh, we, we, we have some other work that's important. So we saw before that the same person published a, a script uh, on how to do a meta-analysis for these individual patient data. And we might want to link it to that module as well. So it can really start creating this web of connections between different research steps to start understanding the process of where findings come from. So where this new publication that I would be creating comes from. And what happens is that each research module is in essence a box for you to put stuff in. 
So that means that if you have data, you can put it into that box. Uh, if you have uh, code, you can put it into the, into the module, but you can also, if you have uh, a PDF file or writing, you can put it in there uh, and say, okay, what is the main file? So what is the file that you want people to look at first and what is uh, supporting files? Plus we can also add all kinds of references here, structured references, which will be made publicly available as well. So, I mean, this, this is an example module. So I'm gonna delete that real quick. So you can also manage some of your drafts here and simply uh, publish these whenever you're ready. So we saw uh, an example of a PDF being published and uh, we also already talked about a script being published. So if we go here, uh, we can download it and we can open up our, uh, our script editor, wherever that is on your computer, and we can immediately start looking at the, uh, the origin of, of some of this, these analyses that might follow from it. And the key here really being that by sharing each of these steps, we can also understand better and learn from each other what, uh, what, uh, what steps led to a specific finding without any limitations as to what a journal will allow you to publish. So it's really regaining some of that control. And if we look here on the right, we can also see that the, um, that these links, so I'm also just trying to get the chat in a good place, um, that these links are also immediately visualized. So if we look at this specific script, uh, that we can also see, okay, what there are steps that follow from it, next steps. Oh, okay, let's go there. Then we come back to this presentation again. And if there was a next step linked to that, we could go to that one again. And so we could really go through the archives and find the context of, uh, of the research that we're looking at. I'm gonna take a quick look at the chat here. So we've got uh, two questions. Yeah. So how, how is research equals uh, related to nano public Applications is uh, one of the questions. Um, and then the other question is, can you follow on one new step from multiple previous outputs? So in relation to nano publications, uh, research modules and nano publications are two separate things. Uh, nano publications really often refer to um, variable X influences variable Y positively, for example. It's all about assertions. Uh, here, it's about modules of information. So they, they are substantively different in that sense. Um, I do follow the work on nano publications because it's very interesting. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Thank you for that one. And also in relation with the other question, can you follow one new step from multiple previous outputs? So in essence, anything you can imagine, how you might link, these different steps, it's possible. So you can link five data sets into one analysis, for example. You can imagine in a meta-analysis that might happen, but you can also go from one result uh, or, or one finding. It can, uh, it can spur a lot of discussion or a lot of new uh, thinking uh, that is linked to it. So in that sense, uh, yes. And you can also link to, you know, old and new stuff at the same time, depending on where your uh, steps come from. So going back uh, to the drafts page, I'm going to quickly show you how our author publication process works. So if, for example, um, this is a, a module I'm working on right now, uh, I'm the only author, I have uh, a figure included here, plus the supporting data, how it's collected, and how uh, the plot is made. Um, and that, in, in essence, is a very small output, but it is part of the work that I'm doing. And uh, it might help somebody else uh, in a way. And also, if, uh, 
if people see it, they might be able to use the code or use uh, the information from it in something they're working on. But I'm the single author right now. I could also decide to simply add authors who are on the platform. Uh, but because I'm a single author, I can say, okay, I can immediately you know, publish this. It's not completely done yet, so I'm not gonna do it because I can't revert this. Um, and if there are multiple authors, we actually have a check system where you can only publish the, the research step once all of the authors have approved it. So here on the right, we can manage the authors. We can, for example, say, well, you know, I want to move this person down to uh, in the author list. But we also see, OK, have they approved for publication? And after every major change within the research module, the authors need to reapprove because there's no journal or no nothing happening at the other end where they say, okay, um, you know, please sign this contract. Uh, it really is important for people to approve the publication. So I can now click on approve to publish. And that signals to my co-authors that I think this is ready to be published. Um, and then I need to refresh the page. And then it says that I have approved, but I see that my co-authors haven't yet approved. So I can't publish this work yet. So this is really also to ensure that when you're working with other people, that uh, whatever gets published is always the version that everyone has agreed on. Not that you all of a sudden receive an email where it says, hey, something has been submitted and that's that. So that gives you a short overview of Research Equals as a platform where you can sort of publish your, your research steps. There's of course a bit more to discover, um, but uh, also to ensure that, uh, that we do end on time. Uh, I'm gonna go over to, the, to explain a bit about the tech stack. Uh, so if you join me here, uh, I prepared this as slides, but I realized there's only two slides in this presentation. So I'll just share uh, the picture in the Google Doc. Um, but to give you a sense of uh, how, how Research Equals is run uh, at this moment at a production level uh, is that not all the services are included, but the most important bits and pieces are. So what we do is I'm going to work back from the front end. Uh, so we work uh, from what you see as a user. Uh, uh, it's all based on React. Um, and whenever somebody uploads something to, uh, to Research Equals, it goes through this service, uh, a content distribution network, Upload Care, which then ensures that the URL gets uh, posted into our uh, into our back end. So in that sense, uh, what we have done here and what I'm trying to visualize here is, is that the research equals, you know, always relates to other services to, to create this whole publication pipeline. Um, the back end is managed uh, by open source software called Blitz, which also incorporates Prisma to manage the database. Uh, where we where we store all of the information that you just saw, uh, and we then process all of that information to finalize the publication through Crossref. Um, so notably, uh, there's uh, very little open source code to uh, standardize open source code to interface with Crossref. Um, so we're trying to build up uh, a small library to do so. So if you're interested in that, please do let me know. Um, but also when sort of the back end is here, it's a central piece because it manages, it's all server, server side rendered. Um, we also ensure delivery of emails. So for example, when you sign up that the email to verify your, uh, to, to verify your account also lands in your inbox within a few seconds. We use a service called Postmark. Um, so really to also showcase that research equals, you know, doesn't stand on its own, but it's a, a web of interconnected services, uh, both open source, but also partly commercial. And most importantly within this space is of course the open infrastructure of Crossref, which is used to mint the DOIs and ensure that the metadata for your publications uh, gets transferred into 
the scholarly record, which is also sort of a nice segue towards, um, towards the uh, contribution aspect of research equals because all the code is open source for research equals um, and you can inspect it and we we do run a community to also make uh, upgrades implement feature requests and to continuously evolve it so as i said we launched sort of eight weeks ago and we continuously keep adding features but also to try and understand that it's not just us determining, hey, we want to implement this, but we do want to gather input from researchers and uh, research su support staff about what, uh, what is useful within this space. We, uh, we manage all of our code openly and continuously. We don't just push once a month. Like if there's an update, it will be uh, immediately uh, pushed on here because our deployment of the, the, of the web app um, you know, it also is based on our GitHub. So if you go to the Libc Research Equals uh, repo, that's where uh, the core of all the work uh, is going on. So you, of course, if you run into an issue, we always invite you to, to open a, uh, an issue on GitHub as well. Um, but one of the main areas that I'm trying to, you know, encourage people to go to is to use the GitHub discussions. Um, especially for feature requests. Uh, so we try to track um, through the upvoting system that they have here, also uh, what, uh, what features we implement. Um, so for example, we have this thread over here that uh, we started out with just having no file previews at all. And then you just saw the PDF previewer that was based on some of the requests over here. Um, so if you if you feel like uh, uh, you have a few minutes during uh, the, the the next few weeks uh, and you have a GitHub account, uh, then do feel invited to even just upvote some stuff that you go like, oh yeah, we'd like to see that because it, this is really really incredibly helpful for us. Um, or open up a new thread if you if you're missing something. Um, but in that sense, uh, research equals so all of the code that that is really part of the platform is in here. Uh, but understanding that, you know, it is uh, one big repo that controls all of the stuff that's going on uh, and not everything is uh, always 100% documented. Uh, we also have an open Discord channel where, you know, it's a bit more informal uh, where you can join in and uh, also keep track of some of the, the information that's happening. So you can sort of choose a bit about where you want to go then. <laughs> Stefan isn't surprised to see uh, Egon as one of the contributors actually already made a contribution to introduce linked data into the platform meta, uh, into the page metadata to make sure that, um, that people can do it. So I explained a bit about the, the platform itself, uh, that it's about publishing research modules, uh, explained a bit about uh, the tech stack, uh, which I'll share a quick screen cap in the Google Doc uh, in case that's of interest. And also that this is the, the GitHub repo where, uh, where we sort of track all the contributions and really no contribution is uh, too small uh, in that sense. Uh, we've already had a lot of con contributions come in from people all over. So, you know, a bug report, please do. If something is annoying you, please do. I got the five minute mic, thanks. Um, and, uh, and really any, any suggestions uh, we're very grateful for. And the main thing really here is we are an independent organization building this open access publishing platform. So we're really trying to to get to the stage that we can uh, serve the community as good as we can. And you know, by doing so, hopefully also create something of value uh, for practical research purposes. And uh, yeah, uh, also recognizing that that's something uh, which we cannot do alone. Um, so thank you very much for being in this session and I'm happy to, to open up the floor for questions and uh, yeah, uh, also, again, want to recognize all the contributors you see on the screen right now. Um, so thanks for listening to this demo about research equals, and I hope to 
um, to connect with you about the potential or you know, also some of the issues you, you might see with regards to adoption. Uh, and we have four minutes for open discussion, and if I'm correct. I've also got questions in the document, but then you could answer those after me. Yes. So does anybody, if anybody has a question, just put your hand up. I mean, you, you vote to a hand up. Uh, otherwise, you can try tackling some of the questions in the document. I think uh, yeah. Stefan um, is, uh, is not shy to... Yeah, it's just the one that we could perhaps uh, tick off or still in the session. Um, how do you persist the, the, the files and the outputs you get into the platform? So I imagine that could be a, an issue. Yeah, so that's a fair question. Uh, of course, because we're, uh, we only launched quite recently, uh, our main persistence right now is, is that we have a contract with, uh, with Upload Care that as long as we are a customer with them, that they will keep it on, uh, uh, online. Uh, and part of it, uh, part of the next steps is also, well, the content that is published for example, all under permissive licenses, we could easily sort of create a bucket for anyone to download so that in the case of an event uh, that people could have it. But uh, we are looking into our archival strategy to sort of go more and more towards long-term storage, also recognizing that we have to prove that we're around for a long time and create that trust. So that's, that's a very valid question where I'll, I'll be very honest. We don't have that, uh, that guarantee right now. Uh, but we are working on that archival strategy. And a big part of this is also openly documenting and sharing that journey. And we have that responsibility towards Crossref. They specifically say, hey, if you're a member of, of our community, you got to make sure you're going to archive and you're committed to that. So, One way of doing this would be to accept um, third-party publications, like people could put in something they put on Zenodo or Software Heritage. How, how do you mean that that they can sort of uh, that you can view those things in research equals? Yeah, I mean, you could you not create a, a module where the input is something that's archived somewhere else? Ah, like that. So, so you, okay. So, so I'll sort of like uh, um, you know, there's a longer term vision, but a, a part here also is, is that indeed on Zenodo, but also in a lot of other spaces, all that metadata is publicly available. So we do indeed uh, see those as sort of their own modules as well, which you can connect to. Uh, and you could technically also view on research equals to a certain degree and then be linked out to them. So, so yes, uh, indeed, that is, a, is one tactic. Thank you. Well, I think it's almost the time. Well, thank you very much. Before we give uh, Shem a, a, a heart attack, um, yeah. if we can thank um, Chris for the virtual end of applause. Yay. Well, thanks everyone for joining, and uh, I'll stick around for Gemma as well. <laughs>